Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Don't you have school today? No, uncle. It's holiday for us. Can you please tell me a story today, uncle? I'm so happy to see your enthusiasm. You can learn so much from the life of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It will help you lead your life in a positive way. That is correct, uncle. Which story are you going to tell me today? Inshallah, I'll tell you the story of Sayyid bin Amir Al Jumahi radiallahu taala anhu. The story of Sayyid bin Amir Al Jumahi radiallahu taala anhu. Sayyid bin Amir Al Jumahi radiallahu taala anhu was one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was not a Muslim by birth. He left his home, which was in the region of Tarim. along with hundreds of others to witness the end of the sahabi khubab bin adi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu khubab bin adi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was an earlier entrant to islam the great sahabi was captured by the enemies the enemy decided to take the life of this noble personality in the presence of all the people of makka This way they could make an example out of him. They also meant it as a warning for those who were planning to join the prophet. They were called to witness the death they had to face if they abandoned the religion of their ancestors. When Sayyid bin Amir al-Jumahi witnessed the proceedings, he was impressed with a strong faith and the fearless attitude of Khubab bin Adi radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He acted as a man of faith even when he saw the death right in front of his eyes. He was never shaken and he faced the death with a smile. In that moment the people gathered around realized that Khubab bin Adi radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was receiving enormous strength from Allah. The vibrant, youthful and intelligent Sayyid radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was caught in the ripples of that great event. The death of Khubab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and his heroic response in defense moved the young Sayyid bin Amir radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu. The faith expressed by Khubab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu attracted him to Islam and its studies. After accepting Islam, Sayyid bin Amr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu migrated to Medina and attached himself to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He showed great interest in studying the Holy Quran and in living life as per the instructions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was the governor of homes in Syria during the caliphate of Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu appointed him as governor of homes Emissa in Syria. Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu once called him and said, "I appoint you as the governor of homes." Sayyid Amir radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, "Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu, I beg you in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not cause me to go astray by involving me in worldly affairs." Umar al-Khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu became somewhat angry. He said, "You people have placed the responsibility of caliphate on me, and now you are leaving me alone in this great matter?" He replied quickly, "By Allah, I will never forsake you." In this way, Sayyid bin Amir al-Jumahi radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu became the governor of homes in Syria. Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu then asked him about the salary he required. He asked, "What should I give you as a salary?" He was very much disturbed by that question. He did not want him associate with the worldly attraction, and he said to Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu, "What would I do with it, commander of the faithful? What would be given to me from the treasury would exceed my needs." He answered, Caliph was very much impressed with his reply and bid him farewell. Homs was a big city that witnessed one after the other the rise and extinctions of many civilizations. Besides, it was a vital trade center too. 
Sayyid Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu tried to live the most humble way. He was not a conventional governor as people thought. Once during a visit to Homs, Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu asked the people of Homs if they had any complaints against their governor. The people then informed the caliph about the four major weakness their governor had, which required his urgent attention. When Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu arrived at the office, he summoned Sayyid Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu and in his presence he asked the representatives of Homs to state their complaints. The first complaint that people had was that he left his home very late in the mornings. Sayyid Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu replied that it was because after his morning prayers he read the Quran. And since he didn't want any servants, he had to assist his wife in preparing the meals and do other chores which took a lot of time. Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu's face brightened when he heard this and said, All praises and thanks to Allah. The second complaint that arose was that he did not attend anyone during night. Sayyid Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu explained that he reserved the night for his prayers like how he reserved his day for the people. And that's why he didn't attend anyone during the night. The caliph was satisfied with his reply again. The third complaint was that he was not available for two days in every month, in which he doesn't leave the house at all. To this, Sayyid Razi Allah replied that it was because he had only two pairs of garment and he had to wash and dry them. Only after wearing them, he was able to leave the house again. When Umar Razi Allah Anhu heard this, his face brightened. The fourth complaint was that he occasionally fell into fits of unconsciousness. Sayyid Razi Allah Anhu explained that he was a witness of the martyr of Khubay al-Ansari in Makkah and he could do nothing to help him. Whenever he recollected the incident, he feared the punishment of Allah and that's why he faints. Saying this, he bowed his head and stood silently waiting for the caliph's verdict. There was nothing more to be said except what Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu said in response. Alhamdulillah, all praises and thanks to Allah. He then told everyone, that the governors today lived like kings. They filled their stomach with food while their people were hungry. He then requested the people gathered around to learn from their governor's life as that is how a Muslim should live. The piety, honesty and dedication of Sayyid bin Amir al-Jamahi earned him the love and respect from everyone. He had dusty, uncombed hair. Nothing in his looks or appearance distinguished him from the poor Muslims. Once, some of the officials from home visited Umar Razi Allah Anhu. They were people of integrity who had earned the confidence of Umar Razi Allah Anhu and he respected them a lot. During the conversation, Umar Razi Allah Anhu requested them to write down the names of the poor ones in their province so that some money and material could be sent for their relief. While checking the list, Umar Razi Allah Anu was surprised to see the name of the governor of home mentioned in the list. When he asked them about this, they said it had been several days that this man had been living without a fire being lit in his house. When the caliph heard this, he was greatly moved and he started weeping. He arranged thousand dinar in a purse and asked them to give this money to relieve his needs. Umar Razi Allah Anhu said to the officials, Convey my salam to Sayyid Al-Jumahi Razi Allah Anhu and tell him that Amir of the Muslims sent him this money to relieve his needs. The official agreed and visited the house of Sayyid Razi Allah Anhu. When the officials handed over the purse to him, he opened it and found that it was filled with money. He rejected this gift 
at first. But somehow the officials managed to hand over this money. When his wife saw the money, she said to him, Please buy us some provisions and hire us a maid. Shall I get you something better than that? He asked her. What could be that? She asked. On the spot, he divided the money into portions and sent someone in his household to distribute it among widows, orphans and the poor. He was a great sage and one of the most sincere heirs to Allah's Rasul. He lived his life truly, heeding the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's right. I'm really surprised to hear the way he dealt with his wealth. He could have been a rich person. True. However, he was a wise man and he had enough wisdom to realize that the real reward for him will be given at heaven. Inshallah, I'll tell you the story of another Sahabi tomorrow. May Allah bless you.